Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. This is David Shoemaker, and I'd like to welcome you to Living Thelema. We have a special segment this month. Um, as you may have heard, um, I have collected the materials that I've been covering over the past three and a half years on these audio segments into a book. And the book is called Living Thelema, A Practical Guide to Attainment in Aleister Crowley's System of Magic. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it today. Uh, go over some of the contents and uh, read a bit from the introduction. Now, while the book has as its core the material we've covered in these segments, um, I've also included a lot of additional material. Um, there are quite a few diagrams that illustrate some of the finer points of Kabbalistic psychology, the methods and tools of AA, and the transformative processes associated with the tarot trumps on the path towards knowledge and conversation. Um, and these diagrams really, I think, make it um, easier to approach some of the material that uh, uh, perhaps when it's laid out only in audio form is, is a little harder to track. So I'm hoping this will be a good additional resource for you. Um, I've also added a number of new um, practical exercises to deepen your relationship with the material. And uh, finally, the book's content will be augmented by a growing library of demonstration videos and related resources at livingthelema.com and the Living Thelema YouTube channel. I've been gradually building these uh, resource materials over the past few years, and we'll be adding a lot more in the coming months. Let me read a little bit from the introduction. I think this uh, sets up the book fairly well. It uh, gives an overview of the different parts of the book, and... Uh, I talk a little bit about my own background, something I haven't really had that much of an opportunity to do in these audio segments, um, but uh, I thought it would be appropriate and hopefully interesting for you to get a glimpse of where I came from and what brought me to the doorstep of Philema uh, many years ago. So with that in mind, let me get started. Looking back over the past 20 years of my involvement with Philema, I have often reflected on what exactly drew me to the great work. Life is simpler, at least superficially, without all the self-discipline required of initiates, and one can easily find a spiritual path with more cultural acceptance and societal support mechanisms. There's a church, mosque, ashram, New Age guru on practically every block in today's world, but I had a pretty tall order for any spiritual system. Give me wonder and mystery, but don't make me check my brain at the door. This spiritual and intellectual dilemma was more or less foreordained for me. My father was an atheist philosophy professor, while my mother was a musician and theologian from a deeply religious upbringing. I had to make sense of this somehow, to find a way to reconcile these divergent worldviews and appreciate the positive contributions each perspective had brought to my life. Luckily, my parents were both open-minded enough to give me space to find my own answers. After graduating from college as a psychology major, I set off for graduate school to become a psychotherapist. I learned all about the mainstream cognitive behavioral approaches to therapy, but the work of Carl Jung and other so-called depth psychologists was always tugging at my sleeve. After a few years of exploration, I stumbled upon the work of Israel Regardi, and shortly thereafter, Alistair Crowley and Thelema. I had finally found the solution to my spiritual dilemma. Here was a path of passion, devotion, mystery, and transcendence, yet it was to be executed with scientific rigor and a healthy dose of skepticism. The method of science, the aim of religion. Here I could unify the best parts of the divergent perspectives my parents had shown to me into a coherent whole and forge a path uniquely my own. I immediately set about contacting all the Thelemic groups I could find in those pre-internet days, and in the fall of 1993, my journey into initiation formally began. I joined Ordo Templi Orientis, and I committed myself to the student path of AA. Before long, I found myself in the position of assisting in the training of more junior initiates, reviewing their assignments, teaching and testing them on various magical techniques, and evaluating their diaries. I moved to California and began to work under the direct tutelage of Phyllis Seckler, Sora Merrill. Within a few months, I had advanced to various administrative positions in the orders with which I was working, and was spending about as much time with my magical pursuits as my day job. I've seen several generations of students succeed and fail. I've seen entire magical orders come and go. I've consulted with students on the mechanics of ritual as well as the triumphs and tragedies of their personal lives. 
In writing this book, it is my hope that I can communicate the insights I've gained over the past 20 years as I've witnessed the day-to-day -day strivings of modern magical aspirants. I've learned from experience what works and what doesn't, and the pitfalls that face seekers in our tradition. I've designed this book to be a useful reference at every stage of the path. Once you've read the source materials from Crowley and others, you should be able to pick up this book and get valuable advice on how best to execute those source materials, whatever your level of expertise. Beginning students can learn how to get the most out of basic rituals like Liberesh, pentagram and hexagram rituals, and so on, and how to understand concepts like the true will. While intermediate and advanced magicians can get helpful advice on pursuing the deeper work of AA, and discover ways to enrich their existing practice with new perspectives on the foundational materials. How to use the book. This book is not intended to be a comprehensive survey of all the concepts and practices of the Thelemic Path of Attainment. Rather, I have chosen those topics where I felt there was the greatest need for practical commentary, and where I could offer a unique perspective on the material. I certainly have no illusions that my take on all these topics is the best or the only way to think about them, Accordingly, I encourage you to approach everything in this book with your critical thinking skills fully engaged and with an attitude of balanced skepticism. I have included performance notes and other comments concerning a few of the basic rituals you are likely to encounter in your magical path. While some minimal ritual outlines are provided, I have elected to emphasize the various experiential aspects of ritual performance rather than focusing primarily on the mechanics of the ritual. As with much of the rest of this book, my aim is to help you deepen your practice of these rituals, to give a greater context for their use, and to enhance the inner energetic patterns that make them come to life in your daily work. Even where I delve into theory, I have tried to emphasize how the theory can inform your practice and help you understand the experiences likely awaiting you on your path. Let's take a look at the different sections of the book so you'll know what to expect. Each section approaches the Thelemic Path of Attainment from a slightly different vantage point. In Part 1, we'll review some of the underlying principles of Thelemic Attainment and discuss an array of practical tools you can use as you progress in your path. Some of you may be relatively new to the concepts of the Kabbalah, so I've included an introductory essay on this topic as the first chapter. If you have a solid grounding in Kabbalistic theory, you can safely skip this chapter and move on to the more advanced material beyond. Included in Part 1 are practical discussions concerning many of the foundational ritual and meditative practices of Thelemic magic and mysticism, as well as a review of associated tools such as astral projection, devotional practices, and sexual magic. If you're new to magical practice, these chapters will give you plenty of material for months or years of experimentation. Experienced practitioners will, I hope, find their work refreshed with new perspectives on these tools. In keeping with my aim for this book, I have avoided undue emphasis on historical or philosophical details in favor of practical and experientially useful guidance. In Part 2, we take a step back from the specific tools discussed in Part 1 and focus on broader conceptualizations of the magical path itself. Here we'll discuss the path of attainment in light of the training methodologies of AA, the trumps of the tarot, the chakras, and a number of other symbolic templates that give unique perspectives on the path. This section of the book will give you an opportunity to pull back the camera a bit so that you may better understand the transformative processes taking place within you as you progress in the great work. Special emphasis is given to various ways of understanding the path toward the knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel and the later ordeal of crossing the abyss, as these are the critical events in the magical career of any seeker. In the final section of the book, we will bring our discussion to a close with a review of various techniques and tools for managing the challenges of everyday life. To a great extent, these tools reflect an integration of my experiences as a Jungian and cognitive behavioral therapist with the principles of magic. After 20 years of treating patients and training magicians, I think I have a few useful tricks up my sleeve. So those are a few passages from the introduction. I hope that that was an interesting uh, teaser for you and um, a good overview, basic overview of the different parts of the book and how to approach them. Um, I certainly hope, as I said, that uh, there's something in there for everybody, uh, regardless of how experienced you are. And I have designed the book accordingly. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, get something out of it. The book's going to be released in several different formats. Uh, there's going to be a standard hardcover um, and a special custom leather-bound edition. This will be limited to 31 copies. 
There's also going to be a standard paperback and uh, digital versions in all the most common formats, including Apple iBook, Kindle, Nook, and others. Anima Solis Books is taking pre-orders for the standard hardcover and special editions right now. Just follow the About the Book menu link at livingthelema.com or find the link on the podcast blog. The paperback and ebook versions will be released on August 25th. You can also view the full table of contents and read what a few prominent Thelemic authors have to say about the book. I hope this new book will be a useful resource to you as you walk your path of attainment. I look forward to hearing your feedback and questions and to sharing more audio segments with you in the coming months. But for now, I'd like to leave you with a passage from the chapter on Libra Samek and the Invocation of the Holy Guardian Angel. If you persist in this work, invoking often and inflaming yourself in prayer to the angel, if you listen inwardly for the communication of the tools and the ritual forms as you build toward the final working, you will succeed. Persistence is 95% of the work. I've never seen anyone persist in the system of AA and not succeed. All of these so-called failures I've witnessed involved aspirants who quit doing the work one way or another. They stopped doing daily practices, gave up on the path, or succumbed to their egos and didn't follow the system as it is laid out. But not once have I ever seen someone persist in the work and fail. Never doubt yourself in this regard. Persist with intelligence, courage, and devotion, and you will attain. Love is the law, love under will.